Hey guys, what's going on? It's Shot here. Welcome back to CSGO Discussions, episode 3. This one's going to be on energy. Um, a topic I've actually wanted to talk about for a very, very, very long time since they actually came out and I've seen constant results from them. Um, um, they're a team, let's see here. They're a team made up of Gobby, Legia, Peter, Justin, and Silent. Um, five players that you wouldn't really think that would be able to compete, top level CS. They're currently two or one in no that's not true that hasn't been updated um i think they're currently two and two in the eca esl season um season three and they have a lot of like top tier competitors they have actually beaten in the last couple months or a month and a half two months since it's been out i think now i want to go through each player and i want to discuss how this team actually works and why it works so well and why they can be like an upset team and how they can actually compete and be top three in na and i their skill level isn't high at all. They're, um, and I'll explain why I think they can play with the best, even though their skill level is lower. Um, so I'm going to go through. They played 14 mats as a team so far. Their wins are 7. Their losses are 7. Um, their KD ratio is 0.99. And the best player is Justin. So we'll go through. Well, actually, let's hit up Justin first. So <clears throat> he has a 1.01 rating. Um, Peter has a better rating, but apparently over the couple months, Justin's been doing well. So we'll go through Justin, then we'll go through Peter, Silent, Legia, Godby. Save the best for last, in my opinion. All right. So Justin used to be on other teams. Uh, he's been floated around. He used to be a method, I believe. And I think he said he was going to quit for studies, and then he came back. I don't know, He because I think uh, Godby and Legia talked to him, and Silent, I think he's always been friends with Silent. He is a very... Actually, his headshot rating is 45%, which is very good, in my opinion, for, like, NA. <clears throat> he's a new player. He's 23 of age, and also, he he's really shown what he can do. And he's the most skilled player, in my opinion, on this lineup, even though Peter is a better, better uh, rating than him. He is really, like, entry-oriented. He headshots very well. Um, his movement could be better, but it's still very good. Like, he removes around the map, he goes through smokes. He's not like a Stewie that jumps through smokes, but he can play smokes like a Snacks or something. Not as good, but he can go around smokes and stuff. Um, so, I think Justin is the heaviest fragger on this team. So, then we move to Peter, which <clears throat> they could have got a better opper, but they, like, what other oppers are there? I don't, I never think, I thought, never thought Peter was very good at uh, opping, actually. The one he was always overrated in my mind because he had that one tournament on MLG Aspen or and it, MLG Aspen X Games, MLG X Games against um, LDLC at the time with Shocks, Keo, um, Happy, Smiths, and MBK. And he went absolutely ham and won them the game. So after that, everyone was like, oh my god, Peter, CLG, best team NA. But he just dropped off since then. He hasn't been as good as he's been. Um, he has a 1.1 KD ratio and a 1.10 a 1.04 rating overall. I think uh, if Peter is capable of listening to the calls that Gobby makes, and I'll, I'll talk about Gobby after, then I guess he was an okay pickup because there's no one really else that can op. Silent can op, but uh, he's been on the rifle. And when they double opt last game against Liquid, it was actually Justin that opt, not Silent. So I guess he moved away from the op. I don't know. So um, that's Peter, and then we're gonna move to Legia. Uh, now, Legia is one of the worst players I've ever seen movement-wise. Um, not movement-wise, like, just, like, aim. Like, movement, he's fine. Just aim. I just don't, I don't know. But for some reason, he fits into this so well. Like, the plan so well. He's, like, he's more of, like, the third, fourth guy in type of thing. And I don't, it just works, dude. Like, I just don't know why. I, I have no idea why he, he's playing this well, to be quite honest. Like, you can see his ratings been like 0 0.2 point or negative 2, negative 41, negative 3. And then these last games he's played are like 43, 26, 21. So he's been lately, he's been very good. And I just can't explain why. I don't think he's a good player whatsoever. I think he's the least skilled player even under God B. Because God B can call. Um, so I don't, I guess God B and him are a package. That's why they joined together. But I don't see any reason why he is useful to the team. Um... So he's a player that would probably, like, whatever, stay in. They're doing fine. If they ever need to make changes, he'd probably go be the one to go. Silent has been very good on the Silent now. Sorry. He total 
kill, de kill death ratio is 0.95 and his rating is 0.97. Um, Silent is a very consistent player. He doesn't play, he doesn't frag too high. Well, there's no too high, but he doesn't like carry his teams he's been on. But he doesn't bottom frag where he, it's just too bad where you just can't do anything about it. You know what I mean? Um, but there's one issue which one his old team method when they, he streamed i think one of their games and you could hear him he was very toxic like not toxic raging but every time they would die make a mistake would be like come on guys and sigh and stuff like that which you that's not i would consider that under toxic like that this harms your teammates there's no way you should be doing that um but he's a very if he changed that then i think he's an overall like very very capable player on this team and now we go to the best person on this team, God B. Now, God has been known to not frag. Um, God B has been known for awful aiming, blah, 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 all these things, right? But in my mind, God B is the best IGL in the world. And I'll tell you why. Throughout one point, or not one point, throughout CSGO, he retired from the game he played before. And he's always led German lineups, blah, blah, blah. He was on Mouse Sports. The reason why he had kicked him from Mouse Sports is because they wanted a. A fanatic envious type of style with Nico calling, Nico entering, Nico doing all this. Nico just wanted to control the team. And everyone else agreed because Nico's the hard carry. God B has made this team with four other players that are nowhere near the skill level of other NA players, yet they can play against them. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you right here. Now, if we go to energy, and then we go to. All right, hold on. All right, energy, and then we go to their maps, and I'll tell you why. Ready? Matches. They lost 16 to 12 against. All right, I'll just go through the upsets. 16, 14, Liquid on Dust Two. Dust Two has been very happy, very good for them. 16, 6 against Winter Fox. 16, 14 against Winter Fox. Just a 2-0 against a very high skilled team, comparative to Energy. Winter Fox has Desi, XP3, Anger, Lex, and Flow Stick. Desi's a beast. XP3 is a better opera than Peter, in my opinion. I know people won't agree with that. And just overall, they're not a skilled lineup. But they can do it because their T-sides are so good. Literally, God B reads them like a book. He Perfect timing, perfect executes. I mean, obviously, that's not all on God B. Like, they have to... More, the execute has to work because they have to frag, right? But they've just been playing so well. Like, I just... This is like the, the energy effect. Like, I guess I'll call my video that, like... The God B effect on them is just, I, I don't know. God B's calling is amazing. Imagine if he's on a cloud nine. They're struggling so hard. Nothing's not fragging because he's IGLing and he can't call for crap. Like, God B's amazing. Um, they almost won against cloud nine, 16 to 14 on dust two. Um, they beat cloud nine, 16 to nine on Inferno, which cloud nine is not very good Inferno, so it doesn't really tell you anything. 16 5 against Splice, 16 13 against Splice, which that's not really like a. Not really a telltale, like whatever. Sixteen ten against enemy with Kusta, so that's that's one right there. And then that's all the wins. So as you can see here, throughout their fourteen games played, they won seven of them, lost seven of them against good teams, dude. Like they're playing better teams than they should be able to win against, and somehow they're coming on top. And I do agree that Liquid's not like it's all there yet, right? But like. It's just amazing to me how they can get these wins and and just the God B's tactical mind in this game is unreal and how he can put together a team less skilled than his opponents and still come on top. Not every time, but it's an upset team. I would place this team honestly. So here's my rankings in in NA right now, not LG. LG doesn't count in my book for NA. We have if Liquid can get that crap together, Liquid, Cloud9, CLG energy like and then enemy gg like energy is a top five team in na winter fox has been awful they're better skilled than energy but something about them they just they're not tactically sound like god beast teams have always been in in the history of all cs's and i don't think he gets enough credit like analysts say it but everyone flacks on him because he can't frag and it's not even that bad he lately he's been fine in fragging department so i just really wanted to talk about that and how energy I think we'll have a very good season this year. I think they'll be in the middle of the pack, maybe top top five. Maybe they could go to land. I doubt it. Top five in uh, 
in the ECL league because they have LG there and they have um, Renegades. So I don't think they'll if and if they both count as uh, NA18s in my books, they don't. Then they would be above energy, but just just full out NA18s. Besides, like simple is in liquid, obviously. But I count them as NA18. NA team. Then then they're top five, right? So they can do good this year. Uh, if they stay together, I think they should. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I Hopefully, I'll get more of these videos out. I don't know. I've been kind of like not really knowing what to talk about. and Because I don't want to just talk about what Thorne talks about and other like Jason Moses Atul talks about. I want to talk about my own stuff. And this has been on my mind lately of how energy has really like blown their my my expectations out of the water for them. So um, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you again sometime. Peace.